Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm super excited because we've got some high-end looking DIY items for you. And uh, they're all relatively inexpensive to do. Now, a lot of the materials, I would say the majority of the materials actually came from Dollar Tree. And then I added some enhanced projects or enhanced materials to them, either from Amazon or um, like a local craft store. So, you know, play around with it, have fun with it. Now Dollar Tree is a dollar twenty-five tree, so you know we're kind of shopping outside of Dollar Tree, looking at different options, kind of doing some price comparisons, and um, I put together some projects that I'm super, super excited about. In fact, I think one of the projects is probably my all-time favorite of, uh, definitely in the top of the Dollar Tree projects that I've done here. Now, before we get into those videos, I of course have to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you guys so much for being here. I truly appreciate you. And and if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Let me know below in the comments if you are an OG, that just means you're a part of the original gang, or if you are a newbie and you're brand new to the channel. Either way, welcome and uh, let's get into the projects because they're super, super fun. <laughs> All right, everyone, and for project number one, we are going to do one of these oversized garlands that I found in places like Kirkland's. I found these 50 millimeter wood balls on Amazon. You can also find them on Etsy, and I thought that they were going to be perfect. I could not find any square blocks, but I did pick these up at my local craft store, and I thought that I could just drill holes in them, and it would be really easy. Then I have a real chunky piece of twine there. So I'm going to take six of these blocks, and also I'm going to match it up with six of the round wood beads. I'm gonna go ahead and just drill a hole in the center of these. Now, I will tell you, um, I put down a piece of scrap wood there to kind of prevent myself from drilling all the way through and um, going into my table and through my mat there. And guess what? I did. I went right through the mat and I also went right through the wood. So um, maybe use a thicker piece of uh, scrap wood if you're going to do something like this. Um, you know, what can I say? I was a, I was a bonehead. Now I do want to make a really thick tassel because I feel like that the weight of this really needs a thick tassel. So I have this piece of scrap wood and, uh, I am just going to use this to kind of use a, um, or I'm going to use this to make my tassel with. Now I'm just kind of holding one piece of the, um, twine in place there. And I'm just going to wrap it around this board until I have the thickness of the tassel that I want. Because this is such an oversized piece, I really want this tassel to also be big. So after I've got a generous amount of my twine kind of all wrapped on here, I'm going to slide this off of my wood. And then I'm going to kind of squeeze it together and I'm going to put some tape across the middle of it because I'm going to come back to this in just a second. And now that I've got my tassel kind of all set up, I am going to now take a piece of my heavier twine here and I'm just going to string it through and I'm going to tie a knot and uh, I'm going to actually glue that extra piece of rope or that extra piece of twine down against the other one. That way when I thread my beads, it literally goes right over top of that and that'll make more sense as we start to kind of piece everything together. So I'm going to kind of dust off my workstation here and I'm going to start threading my beads. I'm going to take this square one first and just go all the way through. We're going to drag it all the way down to the bottom there. And then this is kind of where I'm talking about tucking in that little piece. Now I didn't glue it down quite yet because I wanted to make sure that I had the right size twine. I'm actually out of twine, so I'm going to make this one work. But um, I'm going to just thread my pieces just like you would if you were working with a smaller piece of wood. And uh, I'm going to create my garland with this. Now, this, I wanted to keep this natural wood because I really do like this natural wood. I have a lot of navy. I have a lot of black. I have a lot of natural wood pieces and even darker wood pieces in my home. And I really wanted this to be able to contrast. So if it sat on my uh, console, for example, or my television center, um, it would pop against the wood, which is really, really dark. My coffee table is a black metal and glass coffee table. So again, I thought that this would work really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot at the end of that. And that's just so 
I can kind of finish working with this and making sure that um, it's the right size and length. I'm going to go ahead and remove this tape here because this is already tied together. And then once I've got that tape removed, I'm going to take some regular twine and I'm just going to tie this in a knot. And I'm going to make sure that that knot is extremely tight. And then I'm just going to start wrapping around and I'm going to wrap this around to where it looks really good with this larger tassel, you know, it's a larger tassel. I want the kind of rope that's tying everything together, kind of creating that tassel to also look substantial. I'm using a smaller piece of twine because I didn't want to use kind of what was left. And um, as you can see here, this is also where I tucked in that other piece that was glued down. And now you've got everything nice and tight. And then for the kind of ringlets at the end there, this is where we're going to start to create our tassel. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut each of these. I'm actually cutting them individually versus just kind of putting my scissors through all of them because I want to pull them to their kind of tightest length. And then once I've got everything cut tight and everything cut into the um, straight lines, then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of smooth them out, flatten them out, and then trim them off to be the exact same length all the way down around. And then for the other end of my tassel, I'm gonna take that same loop knot that I kind of created when I tied everything off. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of redo that same exact knot. But this time, I'm gonna make sure that that knot is really close to the end of that block. That way I have a really nice, tight garland here that I can use on my coffee table. And when it's all done, this is what it looks like. I absolutely love this. I love the entire setup here that I've got. And I think that this is going to look amazing. I'm actually going to keep this in my office and I'm so, so excited for it and so happy with it. And now moving on to project number two, I'm gonna take this wooden cardboard or this wooden cardboard, this cardboard circle, these wooden clothespins and this Dollar Tree mirror. And we're going to create a larger kind of more impactful mirror. Now that cardboard actually came from a set of cookware that my mom caught me for Christmas. And it had these great wood or these great cardboard circles in them that I thought were going to be perfect to use for some sort of DIY. And I'm so happy I was able to use this right away. This is where the uh, handle of the lid was actually sticking out through that center point there. But that center point is not even going to matter for this. What I'm going to do is after popping my mirror out of the frame very carefully, I'm going to go ahead and just trace around this. I'm going to look for a pen here and uh, I'm going to grab a Sharpie that's got a nice bright color so it's really, really easy to see. And I'm going to trace this all the way around. Now, once I've got that set, I know kind of where my clothespins are going to come into place here. Now these clothespins, these are from Dollar Tree and these are the um, kind of single pack that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. This is in the laundry section, not the crafter square section. It's 36 clothespins and I ended up using three quarters of the package in total for this mirror. And that Dollar Tree mirror, by the way, is the larger um, round mirror that you, or I'm sorry, I think it's the regular sized mirror that you can get. Anyway, um, take your clothespins and you're going to start separating that kind of spring thing in the middle. You can put those aside. Maybe you can use them for a crafting project or something. If you have a crafting idea that I could do with those, I would love it because I hate just throwing those things away. And uh, I am putting them aside and, uh, you know, who knows where they'll show up. Uh, separate all of your clothespins. And again, I used about three quarters of the package for this project. And then you're just going to start gluing these all the way around. So once you've got everything separated, you can go ahead and just start applying glue to the backs of these. Now, your clothespins kind of naturally have that one side that's a little flatter than the other. And the idea here is that we are going to go all the way around the cardboard there and kind of put them right at where that line is that I drew because your mirror and your frame for your mirror is going to actually sit back inside of this circle. So you want to uh, go ahead and glue those kind of accordingly. So I'm just adding some glue down and then I'm going to take my clothespin and I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to try and kind of treat this like a clock initially because I want to make sure that everything goes all the way around and that I've got enough even space. So if you start at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock and place your four, first 
four clothespins in like that, then you can go back through and then start adding in your other pieces or your other times. I think about this like I'm doing a clock and I'm making clock numbers when I'm doing this. Now, after you've got those all filled out, you'll start to see about what you need to do for each section in order to have all of your clothespins kind of evenly spaced. And then you can play around with it. You know, if you mess it up, the great thing about using hot glue is you can always take your heat gun to it. You could reactivate the glue and move the clothespins around. So it's not a, um, you know, this is kind of a, a way that I do it and it seems to work really well for me. Not necessarily the way that you have to do it by all means, but uh, yeah, you're, wa you're watching my video, so I'm recommending it to you. <laughs> So now that we've got all those clothespins glued down, I am going to take my janky jar of antiquing wax and uh, I'm almost out of it. So hopefully I'll be a little cleaner with the next one. But uh, I'm just going to take a thicker brush here. I'm gonna grab some out of the lid and I am going to just work my way around and we are going to kind of antique wash this entire set of clothespins. Now, the reason why I went with this is because it's like 25 degrees outside. It's very cold. It's in the evening when I'm doing this, kind of after my work hours, and I'm just not able to go outside and spray paint. Trust me, I would have much rather spray painted this and uh, it would have been super, super easy. But instead, I'm using this antique wax and um, actually kind of like the way it turns out. So I'm not super worried about getting it like on the sides of the clothespins. I'm not worried about if it's, you know, completely covered or coated because that's kind of the beauty of the antique wax. When you start working with that and after you've worked your way all the way around, um, then we're going to go ahead and take a cloth. You're going to wipe away any of the excess. And when you do that with the antiquing wax, it kind of naturally creates some darker and some lighter areas. And so if you leave some of that wood kind of unfinished or untouched with the antique wax, then it does make a really beautiful kind of uh, color with it. Now for the frame itself, I wanted to kind of take away that gloss or that glare that's from that plastic frame. So I am going to paint this frame with the ink by Waverly Chalk Paint. And again, I love this chalk paint. This is actually linked to my Amazon store if you wanted to check it out. And uh, I really enjoy using this product particularly. I love this color. I love the consistency and I really do like the way it works on plastic a lot of times. I went ahead and just painted the frame as well as the sides. And then after that was completely done and that was setting up to dry, I then took that residual paint that was still left on the actual brush and just kind of went around the center circle and uh, kind of spread the black kind of in, or the black paint on the uh, antiquing wax kind of as I'm kind of working my way out because I'm really wanting to give this kind of that um, kind of industrial vibe. You know, it's got the wood, it's got some black in there, it's got some variations of wood tones and it's gonna be really, really cool when it's all done. I'm super, super excited about just the way this looks right now. So now that I've got the frame all set up, I am gonna go ahead and just pop this mirror right back into that frame using those same little pegs that are kind of at the bottom there. If you go in at a slight angle, you can pop this back in without having to really mess up any of those clips that are already there. That's, of course, assuming that you didn't break any of those clips when you took your mirror off. But if you did, not a big deal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull this backing off because I want this to lay flat against the cardboard. And uh, I also want you to... Um, be able to use that on the back of this mirror. So now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to take lots and lots and lots of hot glue and we are just going to completely trace all the way around the area there in the center. And then I'm gonna add some other little spreads throughout the cardboard piece there, making sure not to go in that hole in the middle there. Then I'm gonna take my mirror and I'm gonna put it face down. There's my camera, my fancy iPhone. And uh, we're gonna glue it down. Now for the back on this, I didn't you know, do the backs of the clothespins as you can see, but I'm just going to glue this hanger on the back here and it makes it very, very easy to hang this mirror up. And when it's all done, this is what it looks like. I love this mirror so much. I think it's super, super easy. It looks like something that would cost you much, much more money. And I'm again, really, really happy with the way that this one turned out. 
Now for this next DIY, this is a little square block organizer that came from Crafter Square. I did this in a shopping hall not too long ago and I said I was going to kind of create like a valet for this for my dresser where I can put rings and, you know, pocket change and bracelets and watches and different things like that as I kind of take them off at the end of the day. I also had these half wood rounds that I picked up on Amazon. I've used these in a couple DIYs and I'm kind of down to my last 30 of these. So um, I will definitely be ordering more of these. These are in my Amazon store. If you want to check it out, go for it. They're really, really versatile. And I actually really liked working with them. Now for the valet itself, what the idea here is that I'm going to take these wood beads and I'm going to glue them on the side of my tray here to create kind of a, a valet station, if you will. And, um, uh, what I do with anything like this, especially where I know I'm going to be doing like five on each side, I will place one down, then I will go to the opposite side, I will stick another wood bead down, and then in the middle, I will add another wood bead, that way I've got about the approximate, you know, correct kind of spacing, and then after that center one is glued down, then I will put the other two to the left and to the right of that. So. Once that is all done, I worked my way all the way around and did all four sides the exact same way. Now, I wanted something that would really pop off of my dresser, which is a dark brown color. And so for this, I'm going to use the ink chalk paint from Waverly. And uh, I am literally just going to paint every single nook and cranny of this tray. I'm going to paint the inside, the outside, the backside, the underside, like every single part of this is going to be completely covered in this ink uh, chalk paint from Waverly. Now I'm using a certain kind of brush because I want to be able to get really, really close to the edges there and make sure that none of those wood pieces are kind of showing through or wood, you know, unfinished wood areas that might be exposed because of the way I glued down those beads. I made sure that I used just a little bit of hot glue under each one of those wood beads. That way I could kind of purposely shove that brush kind of underneath each one of those. That way I really did get, get, get great coverage with these. On the bottom, I just glued some of these felt pads down and you've got the perfect little valet station. I love the way that this turned out. You could put jewelry in this. I think you could even flip it upside down without the felt pads on it and use it as a candle riser. There's so many great things that you can do and I really love the way that this project turned out. This is definitely going to be something that I keep for a long time in my home. Now this next project is probably one of my top favorites that I've made on YouTube so far. A um, couple different items that you're gonna need here as well as this board. Now this board came from those hanging shelves that you can get at Dollar Tree. It just kind of happened to be the right size. I'm gonna fill in those holes with this caulking. I didn't have any wood filler and the caulking, it does work. It just takes a little while to dry and it tends to sink a little bit so if you can get the wood filler, definitely go ahead and get the wood filler for this. Um, again, the caulking's gonna work, but it's just not ideal. Now that little wood shop kit that I grabbed, that's a bird feeder kit. And then I also have a snow globe from Christmas. And then I have that little LED kind of light looking lantern thingy that I also picked up at Dollar Tree quite some time ago. Those will pop in and out from my Dollar Tree on occasion. And, um, when they pop back in, I do like to grab them, and uh, I would love to do a larger version of this or, or several of these, but um, anyway, after you've kind of filled up those holes with the caulking, you can go ahead and just set that aside and let that dry, and then we are going to start working on part two of this project is to take this wood shop kit um, that you can get in the toy section. This is the bird feeder one specifically. Now I've used this particular um, kit in a lot of projects in the past and you're gonna want to grab this piece right here. This is the only piece that we're gonna use so you can put those other pieces aside and save those for another project. Now I've got this uh, little metal hook and I want to screw this into the tip of this wood piece. Now, just kind of trying to screw it in like this wasn't really working for me, so I grabbed a drill that had a very tiny 
uh, drill bit in it. You could even use a hammer if you wanted to. And you're just going to put kind of a starter hole. You're not going to go all the way down by any means because you don't want this to go all the way through. And then you're just going to take your eye hook of some kind and you're just going to screw this in. I've had these eye hooks on hand for quite a while. Um, I've used them on my front porch before for plants and different things. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you can find these at Dollar Tree or not. You may be able to find them at a, uh, definitely at a hardware store or something like that. After you've got that screwed in, then you're going to start painting everything. And to paint everything, we are painting everything this ink again from Waverly. This is definitely my favorite paint of the hour it seems like and um, we're going to paint everything except for the sides of our uh, back there now again when I'm painting I am not going to go through and completely cover all sides of this in this black paint from Waverly this ink chalk paint I am just going to do this top part here because on the sides I am going to be using some Waverly antiquing wax and to do that I'm just going to use kind of a fine tip brush or I don't know exactly what this brush is called if you know what it is let me know in the comments below and uh, I am then going to just kind of do the sides in this brown antiquing wax that way I get a very cool kind of industrial black and brown kind of vibe now, I wasn't really happy with the way that my um, holes that I used the caulking for were looking because the caulking had sunk in just a little bit, especially after I added the chalk paint. So I have these kind of glue-on gemstones. These are for fabric. And all I'm going to do is just kind of peel them off of the adhesive that comes with them. And we're going to separate those. I'm going to grab four of them. And the idea here is that I'm going to glue all four of these kind of in that space where those four holes are. Um, that way it kind of gives it a um, kind of an industrial vibe. It kind of makes it look like it's something that was kind of, you know, it's maybe it's a hardware that's used to hang this up on the wall with or something. It's going to give that illusion anyway. And to do that, all I'm going to do is just grab my fine tip glue gun here from Shorebonder. And I am literally just going to add some glue into that kind of area where I put that caulking. And I'm just going to use a little dab, a little dab will do ya. And then I've got the um, kind of uh, the gem there kind of pinched in my fingernails. And I'm just going to glue those in place. So now that both pieces have dried, I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece. I'm going to glue this kind of towards the top. I did kind of already pre-measure to get an idea of, you know, how low my lantern would hang and everything. And for this, I'm actually going to use super glue because I do want something that's going to hold really, really well. And I'm using the original super glue here. And uh, I picked this up at Dollar Tree. And all I'm going to do is add a very generous amount and I'm going to glue this down into the center and make sure that this is solid on my piece of wood. I'm going to go ahead and cap this because you know how super glue likes to run out all over the place. I don't want that to get all over the uh, workstation here. And then after I've got that kind of held down in place, I'm then ready to start hanging this up. I'm super excited about this. Now, before we get to the hanger up part, this part is totally optional. If you do not have any of these snow globe ornaments that were left over from Christmas, do not fear. You really don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I thought that this really elevated this and made it look like a very high-end fixture. And again, I love the glow that you get. I love that it looks like it's a you know, light fixture that you would buy perhaps at like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. I am going to address this top part here. And all I'm going to do is just take some of my ribbon. This is a black, um, like a silk ribbon that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And all I'm going to do is just glue this totally around the top of the um, kind of the snow globe or what's going to be our light cover. And uh, I am just adding it just a little bit below where the kind of uh, threads are for this that would typically kind of screw into the snow globe part. And I'm going to wrap this all the way around, making sure I use a little bit of hot glue kind of along the way where I need to. And then I'm going to meet these at the opposite end and just add some more glue and glue that together. And we are ready to do the next step. 
Now for that next step, go ahead and add some hot glue to the top here. You're going to add a very generous amount of hot glue and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're kind of getting it right along the edge there. If anything, kind of point your glue gun to where it's dripping towards the ribbon versus dripping towards the inside of the globe because you don't want any of that hot glue to drip down inside of your globe. Then you're gonna kind of connect it just like I did here and you're gonna to have to make sure that you do a good connection right off the bat because once this grabs a hold of that plastic, it definitely holds. And you've got the cutest little light. And I'm really, really happy with the way this looks. Now, for the backing, I just used a command strip and then just very easily took my lantern, hung it right from the hook like you see here. I am so happy with this and I absolutely love the way this looks. I love the way this turned out and I would love to do like five or six of these and have them on a focal wall or something in my den. I am All right, everyone, obsessed. let me know in the comments below which ones were your favorite. I definitely have to say that the last project was my ultimate favorite, but I really do like the men's jewelry valet um, thing that I have on my dresser right now. So let me know in the comments what you think. All right, guys, bye-bye. <laughs>